Our bodies go through some of the most amazing adaptations in response to exercise. And because of these adaptations or changes, this results in improved fitness. Now we often think of these changes in the context of improved strength and size of muscles, improvements in the strength of the heart. But did you know that your blood changes in response to exercise? This is incredible. So in today's video, with the help of the cadavers, we're gonna talk about these adaptations and changes that take place in the blood, how this results in improved fitness, and some of the better exercise choices to stimulate these types of changes within the blood. It's gonna be a fun one, so let's get into this anatomical awesomeness. So let's start with the pump. And it's probably not gonna be a huge surprise that the heart is going to pump blood into the blood vessels throughout the body. Now, there are three different types of blood vessels, one of which is going to be very important to our adaptation story. The first one I'm gonna mention are the arteries. Arteries take blood away from the heart, and most often they contain oxygen-rich blood. And they're gonna distribute this blood to the various tissues, and in this case, we'll talk about, say, like the quads as an example. Say we're exercising the quads, that blood would get there through this artery that you can see here called the femoral artery, and there would be smaller arteries or arterioles that would come off of that femoral artery and go to the individual muscles, and these arterioles would eventually flow into the second type of blood vessel called the capillary. Now these capillaries are what we're gonna focus on because these are amazing little exchange vessels that exchange nutrients and waste products with the tissues of the body and the bloodstream. So we might have carbohydrates, other energy sources, and oxygen diffusing from the capillary into the working muscle, and then carbon dioxide and other waste products, or I like to say metabolic byproducts, would come out of the muscle and into the capillary, this exchange. Now these metabolic byproducts and this blood would flow out of the capillary and into the veins and it would be in the systemic circulation, and our body has various mechanisms to deal with these metabolic byproducts. But back to the capillaries and why they're so important to our discussion. Well, one of the things or adaptations that occurs with consistent exercise over time is increased capillarization. Or in other words, we literally increase the number of capillaries that are going to grow and penetrate into the muscle tissue. Now, granted, growing more capillaries isn't technically a change within the blood itself, but if we have an increased number of capillaries and therefore more tubing, we can fill that extra tubing with more blood. And our body does that our body will increase the blood volume, the total amount of blood, as a response to consistent exercise. And you could see that if we have more blood, we could take more nutrients to the working muscles, have more efficient exchange within the muscles and the cardiovascular system or the bloodstream, and take more of those metabolic byproducts out of those working muscles. So that is one of the important adaptations that occurs with the blood. Increase the overall amount or volume and therefore increase the carrying and the exchange capacity of the blood. But there's another adaptation we need to consider. And for us to understand this, we have to look into what blood is actually made of. Blood can be broken down into pretty much two main components. The fluid component, which we typically refer to as plasma, is primarily made up of water, but also has electrolytes and plasma proteins mixed in. And how we would increase this or increase the volume of our blood is by taking in water and electrolytes, and the liver can also help create more plasma proteins. But the other component of the blood that we need to consider now is the cellular component. Yes, there will be white blood cells and platelets that are a part of the blood, but the cell type that we're most concerned about with exercise are the erythrocytes or the red blood cells. And many of you have heard of the red blood cells, and you may know that they have one main job in life, and that is to carry oxygen. So if we've increased the fluid component of our blood or the overall volume, it would make sense to pair that with an increase in the number of red blood cells. And our body does this by producing more red blood cells in something known as red bone marrow. Red bone marrow is just found deep within your bone tissue in something called spongy bone. But let's kind of step back and put all this together. So we've increased the number of capillaries penetrating into the muscle tissue and we're gonna have extra blood filling those extra number of capillaries. So now, I could take more fluid to the working muscles, I could take more carbohydrates and fats, and obviously now I could take more of these red blood cells and therefore oxygen to go into these muscles. So now I can create more of the energy currency of our cells, which is known as adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. So if my muscles have more energy to utilize, you could see how that could improve fitness and athletic performance. And so now you might be curious about what types of exercise best stimulates these adaptations. And so we definitely need to talk about this. 
But if you are a curious person, you may be excited about me saying thank you to the sponsor of today's video, CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service that offers exclusive award-winning films and shows that you can't watch anywhere else, plus the deepest collection of the best documentaries from around the world. They are also continually adding new episodes each and every week. And one of my favorite collections is called The Science of You, which probably won't be a big shocker to everybody because this includes a multitude of episodes that explores the human body and what it means to be human. Curiosity Stream is also very accessible. It's available on the web, mobile devices, and all of your other favorite streaming devices like Roku, Xbox, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and more. So if you're interested in having unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series, go to curiositystream.com slash IOHA and they'll give our audience 25% off if you use the coupon code IOHA, which is pretty amazing because it is already one of the most affordable and best deals in streaming. We'll also include this information and a link in the description below. So let's get into this discussion about the types of exercises that are better at stimulating these adaptations that we've been talking about. And let me start by saying this. Let's say we had somebody who was detrained or deconditioned and, or just hadn't been exercising for a long time, and then they go from, say, like couch to any exercise routine. In that situation, you'd get some level of increased capillarization, increased blood volume for pretty much almost doing any type of physical activity. But eventually, you're going to get to this point where certain types of exercises do a much better job with stimulating these adaptations. And these types of exercises tend to be endurance-based. So think like steady state cardio from like cycling or running. Now, if you've watched some of our videos before or you've got into the endurance athlete community ever, you've probably heard of like the zones. I've often talked about zone two. Zone two is a level of intensity where you could be running and you're working, but you could still hold a conversation with a person you were running with. Now, that doesn't mean you couldn't stimulate these adaptations by going into like zone three or zone four, or a little bit more intense endurance type training. It's just one thing you have to consider is zone two, you can accumulate a lot of volume, and I'm talking exercise volume here, not blood volume in this case. You could do a lot of exercise throughout the week without burning out or overtraining, and so you'd get a, you can get a lot of stimulus, if you will, with zone two. But you know, as we continue to increase the intensity, the further we increase the intensity, we start tapping into more of those fast twitch fibers and starting into getting into more fast twitch adaptations because the fast twitch fibers don't actually utilize as much blood and oxygen like the slow twitch fibers do. Now, another way to stimulate the increased blood volume and capillarization and red blood cells is through certain types of resistance training, but you'd want to focus more on like strength endurance or endurance strength, however you want to use those words or whatever order. And these would be things like, think push-ups, like to failure, or body weight activities like body weight squats. Things that you're doing like 15 to 20 plus repetitions and really developing that strength endurance. And these types of exercises that stimulate these adaptations are also going to be the exercises and activities that benefit from these adaptations. Like for example, you might be able to improve the number of push-ups you do, run for a longer distance and more efficiently. And this actually isn't foreign to a lot of people who have done some exercising in their lives, they tend to have a pretty good idea that specificity is pretty important when it comes to an exercise goal. And what I mean by that is if your main goal is to run a marathon, you're gonna spend the majority of your time running. We're not gonna have a marathon runner spend the majority of their time doing heavy resistance training and vice versa. Although we may incorporate some of this stuff in small amounts. But you might be thinking, well great Jonathan, I am one of those people that likes to do strength training, my main goal is strength, or maybe you have a sport that you play that's explosive in nature or has a huge anaerobic component, maybe something like basketball. And again, you might be thinking, these don't really benefit from these adaptations that you've been talking about. Well, yes and no. It's true that increased capillarization, blood volume, increased red blood cells and oxygen isn't gonna do a huge amount for one's one rep max in that moment, or even during their heavy weight sets of like four to six reps or a weight that's heavy enough that they could only do four to six reps. Or isn't gonna do a whole bunch for a vertical jump or a sprint down the basketball court. But we know that metabolic byproducts created in the fast twitch fibers, like lactic acid, can be funneled into the neighboring slow twitch fibers within the same muscle. And those slow twitch fibers can process those metabolic byproducts and these slow twitch fibers definitely benefit from the increased capillarization, blood volume, and oxygen. So that means that someone 
who's doing heavy weight training or the basketball player could potentially recover more quickly between working sets or that basketball player could recover more quickly during ball stoppage like say during a free throw if they had some level of these adaptations. So again, we're not gonna have the weightlifter or the basketball player spend a whole bunch of time in steady state cardio or that weightlifter spend a whole bunch of time doing strength endurance type activities, but we could sprinkle a little bit of these exercise choices into their overall training plan and they could get that benefit of increased recovery, which is pretty freaking awesome. Thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully you learned something new and amazing about exercise adaptations. If you're interested in CuriosityStream, that link is in the description below. And if you want to support the channel, go ahead and throw a like in, subscribe if you're not already, and leave some comments below and let us know what you thought of the video. And of course, we'll see you next time.